mother was, uh, her name was Ruth Akiko Ikeda. That was her maiden name. And she was uh, a freshman at Anaheim High School on December 7th, 1941, when the Japanese uh, government bombed Pearl Harbor. One of the first things our government did was to make what they called an executive order. The government ordered that all people of Japanese descent, heritage, that lived on the West Coast were to be sent away to internment camps, away from their homes, their families, their schools, their businesses, their farms, on short notice. My mother lived in Stanton, in, uh, right off of Beach Boulevard. In fact, the building is still there. It's a radiator shop. At that time, there were no other, really no other high schools. It was just Anaheim High School. She used to um, ride her bike. She worked a little job. Uh, she saved money and she paid for that bike. And uh, so she would ride her bike from Beach Boulevard in the city of Stanton all the way to Anaheim High School. Stanton and Beach Boulevard and Anaheim High School are miles, there's several miles distance. I don't think they had busing at the time. And she recalls that she loved that bike. Uh, what was really hard for her though, even though her sister was older, two years, is two years older, her mother made her, made my mother ride her on the handlebars to, to school. So my older auntie didn't have to work. My mother did, <laughs> what she, she, remembered, she remembered and would talk about. But when they were sent to the internment camps, her parents and her, you couldn't take a bike with you. So she had to sell that bike and everybody knew that you had to sell it. So she only got like uh, 50 cents for that bike. That really hurt her. Another story I think that's very important is that my mother had two friends and they called themselves like the, the three musketeers. There were three, three young women, about 14 years of age, and they went everywhere together. They went to school together, they played after school, they loved to play basketball, and they would shoot basketball hoops by themselves. They did their homework together, they shared, they went to each other's homes and um, visited. Uh, when the war broke out, one of them actually came up to my mother and, and said some very hurtful things about um, my mother being Japanese. And um, uh, the other one was loyal at, to the core and they remained friends even, even afterwards, even after my mother was incarcerated. There were 10 concentration camps um, and about 115,000 Japanese people who were sent there. Most of them were citizens, like my mom was born here. She was a citizen supposedly protected by the Constitution. My mother at the time was 14, 15 years old, um, and she became more or less the head of the household in, uh, in Poston, where they were incarcerated. So she, my mother was charged to take care of her two younger sisters and also take care of my grandfather. You have to imagine, um, losing your mother at that time and then losing your home, losing your, your identity and being, um, being imprisoned um, was extremely hard for her. The story of America has been the story of expanding what it means to be an American. And certainly my parents, when you have your own citizens locked up for no reason and undermining the Constitution, um, it really underscores the importance of education for all of our students so they don't take what they have for granted. The fact that my parents were locked up in these concentration camps, yet their son can grow up to become the superintendent of the same district is pretty amazing. My mom, who was at Anaheim High School, right, she never got a diploma, and as a teacher, at Orangeview, I felt that was not right. I felt that you needed to get your diploma. And my mom said, I'm old, what do I need a diploma for, right? And I said, every day I lead the students in the Pledge of Allegiance, right? And it says, you know, injustice and liberty for all. And I think it's important that we send the message to our young people about justice. So she said, okay, you know, I'll, I'll 
consent to getting my diploma, but you have to honor um, the principal there. And he had, she goes, you know, he, I know he died, but his name was Mr. Demery. And I said, why, what did Mr. Demery do? And she goes, back then I was a ninth grader and I was scared, but he did a very brave thing. Well, when the time came that we had to say goodbye to our friends and our colleagues that were being sent away to internment camps, my father called an assembly of the entire student body and he called them together and said, today we have to say farewell. Our friends are going to be leaving to go to internment camps. These are our colleagues, our fellow students and our friends. I hope that you will keep in touch with them and continue to consider them your friends because you know, these young people were born here in California. They're citizens of the United States. They have really more reason to be here today than perhaps I do because I was born in Kobe, Japan. So the district agreed. I called our superintendent, Jan Billings, who's still my mentor, and she agreed that this would be a great gesture. And in 1996, my mom got to walk and graduate with the Anaheim High School graduates. My mother was all smiles. She was so proud. She was so proud to be back at Anaheim High School, especially as a graduate. And when she was able to walk with all the other graduate, graduates, she was just, she was taken back at, at the openness and the welcoming spirit that Anaheim Union High School District, specifically Anaheim High School, had for her as a graduate of, of she should have graduated so many years earlier, and to be back was happiness to her. And um, that um, really, really kind of completed the circle. And it was a very, it was a very symbolic and healing gesture for my family, but also I think for this district. We can never forget, that's the whole purpose. We never, we always remember, but we remember from it, and we remember going forth and having that, that resiliency and that joy for living. I believe also in telling your story, to understand your own personal story, to understand each other's stories. This is how we get along as, as a nation, as a community. Um, it's so important, and to have grace and kindness along with it.